The Incredible Hulk will not be presented this evening. This Christmas, I thought I'd talk about the Star Wars Holiday Special, since there's a new Star Wars right around the corner, and since The Mandalorian pulled so much from it. Released just one year after the original Star Wars, the Holiday Special is considered one of the worst pieces of media in the Star Wars franchise, if not all time. You're probably well aware of the awkward production, the baffling story, the over-reliance on Wookiees with no subtitles, and how George Lucas was infamously so ashamed of the movie, he refused to show or release it again. Luckily, plenty of people recorded it, and today it's easy to find. It's a hard sit, though. It's not fun to watch. There are maybe one or two sequences worth a laugh and a decent moment or two. The only reason anyone ever watches it is for the novelty of seeing what would become a huge franchise fall flat on its face. But that aspect is actually my favorite thing about the special. It's much more fascinating to talk about than actually watch. It's hard to imagine now, but when this came out, Star Wars was all that existed. This was not some world-dominating franchise with tons of expanded universe material. It was one particularly popular movie. In fact, it's probably less weird in retrospect. Nowadays, we're used to Star Wars' dense, nerdy lore, but in 78, most people were probably just sitting down to watch what they thought was a Christmas movie with some popular characters, and instead they got bombarded with bizarre sci-fi lore that in no way tied into Christmas. You probably know the story, but just to cover our bases, in the special, Chewie and Han are headed to Chewie's homeworld to celebrate Life Day, or Wookiee Christmas. Unbeknownst to them, the Galactic Empire is searching his family's home for the pair of notorious rebels. I don't know what relation these characters are to Chewie. My guess has always been mom, grandpa, younger brother, but it might be wife, dad, and child. In which case, Chewie is a really shitty husband and father. Interspersed in this story are random vignettes that add nothing and are only there because the original draft was a variety show and they needed to pad the runtime. On top of that, a lot of these segments don't make sense in the context of Star Wars. Like the youngest one, Lumpy, appealing name, watches a cartoon about the main characters of Star Wars fighting Boba Fett. Why would such a cartoon exist within the Star Wars canon? As rebel propaganda? How did they get Darth Vader to voice himself in this cartoon? Then the stormtroopers are required to watch a segment about a bar on Tatooine getting closed by the Empire. Why is this required viewing for Imperials? This makes them look bad. And then there's a musical number from Jefferson Starship. Just like the normal Earth band Jefferson Starship from the 70s. There's no suggestion that they're playing some space band. It's just them. Are Jefferson Starship canon to the Star Wars universe? I complain, but those are the three best parts. The stuff that makes sense to exist is way, way worse. It's so unbearably boring and unfunny and even hard to watch at points. At the time, this sort of threatened the Star Wars brand before it had really taken off, and then Empire came out and the rest is history. But I find it hilarious that, despite hating it and making it incredibly hard to find, at least at the time, Lucas kept this canon. Boba Fett makes his first appearance here, only to return in Empire, and when Episode 3 rolled around, they kept the look of Kashyyyk, the Wookiee home planet. Even now that Disney owns it, it's gotten referenced by The Mandalorian, and from what I've read, B. Arthur's character appears in a canonical comic book. This isn't some one-off terrible Christmas movie. This isn't even an embarrassing misstep that could have been written off as outside the canon, like, we wish you a turtle Christmas. This is an official part of an ongoing, gigantic blockbuster series, and that's way funnier to me than anything that's actually in the special. Until next year, I'm Matt, and happy Life Day. Wonder Woman, starring Linda Carter, and Incredible Hulk, starring Bill Bixby, will return at their regular times next Friday evening on most of these stations.